Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi American National Catholic Church on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Our entrance song will be number 599 in your green music books. Blessed be the Lord, number 599. Would you please stand as you're able? Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of all my foes. He will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of nor the arrow that flies by day. I need not shrink before the terrors of the night, nor stand alone before the light of day. No harm shall come to me, no arrow strike me down, no evil settling my soul. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And also with you. So I was uh, wondering, um, I thought we'd be a little uh, uh, smaller in attendance given the time change, right? So, so, uh, so here we are. Look at all you Catholics in the middle. Nobody sits in the front, right? So uh, as we gather on this fifth Sunday of Lent, what we're going to hear again uh, very much uh, uh, is uh, the ongoing, uh, I think, love story that God speaks to us about his forgiveness and mercy in uh, every moment of our life. And as we gather as God's people, we take a moment to call to mind our failings and our shortcomings, aware that this God who loves us always brings us healing and forgiveness. And so together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. And I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God the Father, mercies to the death and resurrection of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has, uh, through the death and resurrection of his Lord Jesus Christ, brings us pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. God of power, God of mercy, you bring forth springs in the wasteland and turn despair into hope. Look not upon the sins of our past, but lift from our hearts the failures that weigh us down, that we may find refreshment and life in Christ, our liberator from sin, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, holy and mighty God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, 
who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down. They cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness <coughs> and rivers in the desert. <coughs> the wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I regard everything as loss because of surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a wretchedness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the wretchedness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained these or have already reached the goal, but I present to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. The Lord. 
the war of Lord. Thanks be to God. Lectura de la carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Filipenses. Hermanos, todo lo que era valioso para mí lo consideré sin valor a causa de Cristo. Más aún, pienso que nada vale la pena en comparación con el bien supremo que consiste en conocer a Cristo Jesús, mi Señor, por cuyo amor he, re he renunciado a todo y todo lo considero como basura con tal de ganar a Cristo y de estar unido a Él no porque haya obtenido la justificación que proviene de la ley, sino la que procede de la fe en Cristo Jesús, con la que Dios hace justo a los que creen en Él. Para conocer a Cristo hay que experimentar la fuerza de su resurrección, compartir sus sufrimientos y asemejarse a Él en su muerte, con la esperanza de resucitar con Él entre los muertos. No quiero decir que haya logrado ya ese ideal, o yo sea perfecto, pero me esfuerzo en conquistarlo, porque Cristo Jesús me ha conquistado. No, hermanos, no considero que todavía lo he logrado. Pero eso sí, he olvidado lo que he dejado atrás y me lanzo hacia adelante en busca de la meta y del trofeo al que Dios, por medio de Cristo Jesús, nos llama desde el cielo. Palabra de Dios. Te hablamos, el Señor. Would you please stand? <laughs> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, Return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before the people, they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us, commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test Jesus, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down, and wrote with his finger on the ground. When the scribes and Pharisees kept on questioning him, Jesus straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. When the scribes and Pharisees heard what Jesus had said, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. Brothers and sisters, the good news of salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the Holy Gospel, may our sins be blotted away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Gracias por la ayuda de la lectura en español, gracias. That's as much as I'm going to say in Spanish, right? Because then otherwise I may get in trouble. So, uh, uh, so welcome, welcome, uh, to say, welcome, welcome to this fifth Sunday of Lent. Um, I, I was thinking about these readings in combination with last week's reading about the prodigal son and how this sense of God's mercy keeps unfolding uh, in the scriptures and hopefully in our lives. This is the uh, third mass in which I've preached on these readings and so probably uh, you could tell I was a little tired this morning. So I am and I bet you're a little tired too, right? These, these, uh, these time changes really throw me off a little bit, right? And so, so, uh, so in many ways, I think that uh, the, the nicer weather, the promise of spring, I think it really does help us to maybe begin to appreciate uh, uh, the, uh, the Easter season which is coming. Next week is Palm Sunday already and then after that is our great celebration of the Feast of, uh, of Easter. And so in these readings we hear a little bit of, um, of some of what we understand that happens with the resurrection in that Christ makes all things new. And we hear that in, in Isaiah, this beautiful poetic language of Isaiah, in which he reminds the people, and you and I as Christians, we hear in that, that, uh, that the law is all made new and fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ, right? And so again, Isaiah tells the people of Israel that, that God surprises us with rivers in the desert and flowers where we least expect it. And, and this God who has entered into covenant, who formed us, is madly in love with us and continues uh, to be faithful to his promises. What a wonderful message that is in Isaiah. Paul is writing to the Philippians to kind of remind them, the Philippians thought by virtue of their baptism that they had arrived, as I think many of us do sometimes. So he's writing to remind them in many ways that our baptism just begins the work, right? That, that uh, absolutely, that, that once and for all Christ's uh, sacrifice on Calvary is sufficient for the remission of all of our sins, and that through baptism we die with Christ and rise with him, and now the job is to incarnate Christ in the world. That's where the work begins, and so he's reminding them of that. And then this reading that we have uh, 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 about the woman caught in adultery, and, and it speaks to us, I think, in such profound ways of the concept of forgiveness, especially in a system that is so legalistic that it feels that simply by following the rules, you earn your salvation. And Jesus challenged that his whole life. It is the reason he was put to death. This radical command to love which was simply being reiterated by Jesus because he knew that that was the command in the, in the Hebrew scriptures is the reason that he was crucified. Uh, if we were taking the readings today from the scrutinies, um, which would be the third week of the scrutinies if anyone was preparing for, uh, for the rites of initiation at Easter, we would be hearing the rising of Lazarus from the dead. And what we hear in that reading is that once Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, from that moment on, the, uh, the uh, authorities looked for a reason to kill him. Jesus ro uh, 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 had Lazarus raised from the dead out of love for him, and because of love and this radical c command of love that breaks through all of the boundaries, uh, uh, Jesus was, uh, was, uh, was crucified. And we hear a little bit of the dimension of that love here in this gospel. It's really amazing and it's so rich. Many of, many of the biblical scholars, the exegetes, think that this was not part of the original gospel of John. And in some ways it sounds a little bit more like it may have come from Luke. But that the early church included it because it is such a profound message of the, of, of the love of God for us. And so, so we hear in this scripture, mostly this is being used to test Jesus. So Jesus, who early in the morning is going to the temple, and it's during the feast, so it probably is uh, uh, the, uh, the Sabbath. Uh, and so on the Sabbath, you could only write two words, otherwise you would have broken the law. But you could write as many words as you wanted in the dust, right? Uh, because it reflect, back to, uh, it reflect back to the prophet Jeremiah, who reminds the people of Israel that if you break the commandments of God, your name will not be written in the book of life, but it'll be written in the dust and it'll blow away. So Jesus is giving a direct message to the Pharisees. He's saying, I know what you're referring to. I know the law. 
I, I, I am a rabbi. I, and so he maybe is writing uh, that, that bit from Jeremiah, or he might even be writing the names of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are accusing this woman, right? Because that's what Jeremiah says, right? Your names will be written in the dust, not in the book of life. And so it's very interesting. So Jesus is establishing his authority as a teacher because they're bringing this woman to him to judge her. And I think they missed the whole point of Jesus' existence, right? Because Jesus' uh, judgments and justice go, go beyond simply the letter of the law, and they always move to God's mercy. Can you imagine this poor woman? By the way, uh, from what I understand anyway, in the law, not only was the woman to be stoned, but the man was as well, but we never hear about that, right? And so, so this idea that this woman, and, and uh, interestingly enough, historically, the Romans had probably removed permission for the Sanhedrin to impose the death penalty from the Jewish people about 30 years before this. So this wasn't something that was practiced. So they're using this to test Jesus. They're using this to see if they can have something to bring a charge against him. See, he says he's a teacher, but he, he denies the law of Moses, right? And so Jesus goes beyond that and challenges them. It's so interesting to me that at the beginning of this story, there's a group of men who want to stone a woman. And at the end of the story, there's a group of men who want to stone Jesus, right? Isn't that interesting? I mean, that's what happens is this sense that, that God's love convicts us. And by the way, we hear, uh, we hear how they left one by one and the elders first because the elders would set the example for the community, so they left first, right? And so this idea that Jesus challenges uh, his hearers then and he challenges you and I to, to, to be careful about how we judge, right? And we all know this, we hear this in, in very common ways, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones, right? All of us have at some point in our lives, uh, as I said last week, a chapter that we wouldn't want to be heard read out loud, every one of us, right? And in this case, this woman is brought before uh, this group of people in a very humiliating way. I mean, and the intent is not so much to punish her as it is to trap Jesus. And Jesus, uh, trusting in the Holy Spirit, then responds back, which I think is one of the, one of the probably one of the most profound uh, 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 re retorts in the whole scripture, is let who among you who does not have sin cast the first stone? Who could possibly do that? Not only that, but in combination with his writing on the ground and perhaps referring to Jeremiah, every one of his hearers would have had some sense of their own humanness, would have had some sense of their own frailty, and not only that, would have had some sense of their own experience of God's forgiveness in their own life. It's really hard to judge people, right? Uh, around, uh, around some of the same issues that we have, especially when we have been forgiven of them. Uh, this morning when I was at the hospital and we were talking about this gospel, uh, uh, we were talking about the readings, uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the patients was uh, talking about how um, uh, because of uh, some of her some of her actions how she's always judged in that dimension and uh, and I was thinking about this I was thinking about this that that you and I are much better than our worst moments you and I are much better than 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 our worst behavior this woman is more than this act right this woman is more than simply getting caught in whatever that that was that she was doing. And so that's the invitation for us, is to see others as God sees us, not simply in that one moment, but to see all of who they are and to accept all of who they are. It's really, really hard. We can do that. We categorize people, right? Right? We categorize by what they look like, how they speak, what language do they speak. They are more than simply that dimension of themselves. They are more than that. They are, they are, they are uh, 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 full of so many other dimensions. And this, this idea that Jesus is challenging the authorities of his own people to look beyond this simple act and to not judge this woman solely by, uh, by a, a, a pericope in the law is astounding. It is absolutely astounding. You can see how frustrated they must have been, right? They, they had laid a trap for Jesus and once again, he didn't take the bait, right? He simply invited them to think about their own lives, to think about their own experiences of this God who they are proclaiming, but in the dimension of a God who, as Isaiah reminds them, right, uh, brings us uh, flowers in the desert, who gives us mercy, which is things that are completely unexpected, 
The quality of mercy is, is that we don't get what we deserve and we get more than we deserve. That's what Jesus is trying to preach here. That's what he's trying to say. This God who you are, are proclaiming is not a God who holds our feet to the fire and judges us by our worst action, right? It is a God who takes all of us and sees all of us. We hear it in Isaiah, he formed us, he made us, he entered into covenant with us. This is a God who loves us and didn't create us to condemn us. And so as you and I move in this final week of Lent, maybe we could see that. Sometimes maybe we're the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Maybe we're kind of looking down our nose from a position in which we think that we've arrived at a better place than other people. Sometimes we're the woman caught in adultery, right? Sometimes we are so unable to forgive ourselves for a particular action that we define ourselves by that. And that's never in the mind of God, right? That is never in the mind of God. God invites us to go beyond that and see uh, in his love for us our redemption and our salvation. So let us continue in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and profess our faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not me, one in being with the Father. Through God all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people called into existence by God's love and realizing his forgiveness for us, we offer our prayers and petitions, knowing that God will hear and answer them. <coughs> our response will be, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For all the people of God's church, that we may find strength in adversity and trust in all things from Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our parish community of St. Francis, that we may be ambassadors of compassion in the war, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the American National Catholic Church, that we may continue to seek out and support the poor and vulnerable in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of all institutions and nations, that they may follow Jesus' example and lead with understanding and forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Gabriella Militello, Sally Marchese, Audrey Medlar, and Melanie Ortiz, that as they prepare for their first Holy Communion, their CCD teachers may guide them as they embrace the fullness of Christ's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who suffer for peace for Iraq and Syria and the end of the violence in Yemen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need in our midst, the unemployed, the sick and the distressed, Ava Covington, and also those we now name, Marvin. For the folks at Arden Court, Branch Brook, and the hospitals from our parish, we pray to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our dead and for the eternal life in God, including those who have died in the war in Yemen, as well as those we now name. Ruth Ann, William. Ms. Hannah's father. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In thanksgiving to God for the uh, presence of Peter Maureen and for her continued healing that God might uh, soon restore her guitar arm. Right? So, uh, so, uh, uh, so for this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which we've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them if they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Would you please turn to number 525 for gift of finest wheat. 525. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly food. You Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the blood? Outboard. Do not one cup, one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, so saving Lord. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our heart to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with My sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord of God's name. Pardon the good of all God's church. Almighty God, listen to our prayers. As you have as you have instructed your servants in the Christian faith, so purify their hearts by the power of this sacrifice. Grant this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also no, with you. lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to give you thanks. It is fitting that we offer you praise, Father of mercy, faithful God. 
You sent Jesus Christ, your Son, among, uh, among us as Redeemer and Lord. He was moved with compassion for the poor and the powerless, for the sick and the sinner. He made himself neighbor to the oppressed. By his words and actions, he proclaimed to the world that you care for us as a parent cares for his children. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the joyful hymn of your praise. Truly, oh, you are truly blessed, O oh God of holiness. You accompany us with love as we journey through life. Blessed too is your Son, Jesus Christ, who is present among us and whose love gathers us together. As once he did for his disciples, Christ now opens the scriptures for us and breaks the bread. Great and merciful Father, we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit to hallow these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the eve of his passion and death, while at table with those he loved, he took bread, he gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to all of those whom he loved, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to all of those whom he loved, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father most holy, we celebrate the memory of Christ, your Son, whom you led through suffering and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and a place at your right hand. Until Jesus, our Savior, comes again, we proclaim the work of your love, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of eternal blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ entrusted to us. Through the power of your spirit of love, include us now and forever among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we share. Lord, perfect your church in faith and love, together with the patriarchs of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople, Jerusalem, and Rome, George, our bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all those your son has gained for you. Open, open our eyes to the needs of all. Inspire us with words and deeds to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Keep our service of others faithful to the example and command of Christ. Let your church be a living witness to truth and freedom, to justice and peace, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of a world made new. Be mindful of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. With these and all the dead whose faith only you can know, lead them to the fullness of the resurrection and gladden them with the light of your face. When our pilgrimage on earth is complete, Welcome us into your heavenly home, where we shall dwell with you forever. There, with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, 
with the apostles and the martyrs, St. Francis and St. Clair, and all the saints, we shall praise you and give you glory through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. This time I didn't get in the way. This time I didn't get in the way. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. My sisters and brothers, this is Jesus, our Lamb of God. This is Jesus who invites each and every one of us into the experience of God's love, and how happy are we to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Here at St. Francis, each and every one of you are invited into full participation in the sacrament of the altar. May the body of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
the first. Please turn, to Please turn to number 349 for Change Our Hearts, 349. Change our hearts. 
Rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God of life. Faithful and true is the word of our God. All of God's works are so worthy of trust. God's mercy falls on the just and the right. Full of God's love is the earth. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God of life. We who revere and find hope in our God, live in the kindness and joy of God's wing. God will protect us from darkness and death. God will not leave us to starve. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God of life. Let us pray. <clears throat> we ask, Almighty God, to be numbered always among the members of Christ, whose body and blood we share in the sacrament of unity. Grant this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Be seated just for a moment. Um, you saw the children come back. They are preparing for, um, for their sacrament, so please keep them in your prayer uh, prayers. Uh, who you don't see uh, is um, another uh, adult, Jake, who is preparing for baptism. So he will be baptized at the Easter Vigil, and Herman and Jake will be confirmed at the Mass on, uh, mass on Pentecost. So they are preparing for their sacraments of initiation. So keep them in your prayers, right? Keep them in your prayers. More than that, be examples of, uh, of living out the sacraments in your life. That'll be the best thing that you could do for them, right? So, so, uh, so thank you. Uh, Wednesday nights, we're still, um, uh, uh, it'll be the last one, our uh, last Stations of the Cross. So uh, keep, uh, keep updated a little bit. Like I'm going to ask Pat to say something about our convocation uh, this year since he's on the planning committee and probably knows more than I do about that. So, so uh, <laughs> Hi. Um, a couple of years ago, Abby and I went down to the convocation because it was in St. Louis and our son lived there, so we thought it was a good reason to go. <laughs> when we got there, we were shocked to find a bishop and a clergy that not only wanted input from us, they expected input from us. And we have a convocation coming up this summer in, I think it's Claggett, Maryland, where really we want you to come and um, Believe me, you will be put to work. It's very similar to what Bishop George does here when you walk in and he says, hi, how are you? Really nice to see you. By the way, we need you to do this. Um, that's what the convocation is about. It's a chance for us really to help this community grow. And um, it's a terrific experience, so please consider it. The registration form will be available fairly shortly. And I think the date is August 11th to 13th, Ab? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so please, please plan on coming if you can. Thank Thanks. You. The, um, the information is in the bulletin and there's also a Facebook page. Yeah. So yeah. I would really encourage you all to come. Uh, for us as Catholics, it's nice to know that you move in a much larger group of people from uh, North Dakota all the way to Connecticut. And so you'll see all of those. I think Maureen is doing a workshop on, uh, on um, litur liturgy for the, uh, so yeah, so uh, we try to get all of the parishes involved um, and members of the parish with some expertise. So please join us if you can, all right? Uh, it's, a, it's over, uh, uh, it, it's, not, it's only on a Saturday because we all have to get back for mass. Right, so, uh, so come and join us. It's a wonderful time together, a wonderful time together. Um, I think after Mass, there's an extraordinary, extraordinary Minister of the Eucharist meeting, so it won't be long if you just stay with us for a little bit for that. And uh, um, we want to just kind of get you on the way. Any other? other? Um, no, no.
brunch? Oh, we won't have brunch uh, the, at the end of the month because it's Easter. So, uh, so we'll have, you'll have your own brunch, I <laughs> suspect, right? So, and I'd like to go home to my family. I'm gonna leave right after mass if I can make it. I'm gonna take jazz and we're gonna go down, right? So, uh, so we won't have, but we'll have it in April. Is that all right? So we'll have it in April. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. So please join us. Please join us um, uh, as we, uh, uh, as, uh, I, anyway, I think that to me it's just one of the best places. It's nice to see Maureen back. And Leo's been really doing a very kind of Herculean job for us. So. So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So who's new? Anybody new? Who? Yes. Hi. 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 Who? Jim. Jim. Where are you from? Uh, now I'm near Butler that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, welcome, Jim. First thank time. You. Thank yeah. You. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Welcome. Welcome. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, Will. Welcome, Will. Well, welcome. Eddie, Eddie, who used to be our acolyte, brought Will to Mass, so it's kind of nice, right? So, uh, so uh, I didn't want to embarrass Will, but I, I, I was looking at him, so there's not much else he can do, right? So, right? So, so uh, and, and Gail is with us from, uh, from Warden Court, which is nice. Keep uh, special intention for the parish, and, uh, and, uh, and we'll see you. Uh, the Holy Week schedule is published as well, so for Holy Thursday, Mass of the Lord's Supper is at 7 with the mandatum, which is uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the clergy will ask you to represent the parish in washing your feet, and uh, which is what Christ asked us to do for each other. On Good Friday, three o'clock here, and then seven o'clock down at Our Lady Guadalupe, where there's a procession with, the, uh, with the, the body of Christ through the streets of Long Branch. And then on Holy Saturday, the Easter vigil begins at seven here, and Easter Sunday, we'll have mass at, uh, at noon. On uh, Palm Sunday, we're gonna meet on the lawn uh, in the front of the church for the procession, for the Palm Sunday procession. So we'll bless the palms up there, and then we'll process into church, okay? So, we're starting earlier. Yeah. Uh, I think, are we starting earlier? Are we? 11.30. 11.30, so 11.30. Okay, so, yeah, on Palm Sunday. Any word on the donkey? Yeah. No, we're not getting them. No donkey. So anyway, so, uh, uh, although the upper church offered to lend me a costume, so, but we need a head and a rear. So I, I don't know if we want to do that. No, no costume, no costume. So uh, Stan and we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh. Oh, the other, no, I ask people for announcements and then they give them to me in dribs and drabs. So uh, uh, if you'd like to contribute to the Easter flowers, uh, many of us do that in memory of our loved ones, both living and deceased, or if they're away from us. So uh, I believe there's a form for that. So you can fill out the form. And then uh, we pray for, um, for those who you've asked us to remember at Mass during the octave of Easter. So we celebrate that for eight days. And so your family and your loved ones are prayed for by the clergy here at Arden Court, at the hospital and at the jail. So, so, that, uh, so that the masses are being offered uh, uh, pretty regularly for those that you ask us to pray for, okay? So the Lord be with you. And also, and also with May you. Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our mass is ended. Let us go forth from this place in great peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please turn to number 665 for How Great Thou Art, number 665.
body, Son, not spare me. 